Hey folks, I'm Jen Foxbot and welcome to Maker Quest. In this episode, I'm going to give you an overview on how to build a remote temperature sensor that you can put outside using the Photon microcontroller. And as long as it's within your Wi-Fi network, it'll upload data for you to the data.sparkfun.com uh, web server. Check out the tutorial in the video description below, which uh, has all of the code. Feel free to ask me any questions. I kind of glossed over some of the nitty gritty details so that you wouldn't get too overwhelmed and tried to be as obvious as possible about the things that you need to change to create your own data stream so that you can log your very own temperature data. All right, let's go through this. So first of all, this is the Photon Microcontroller, and I just pulled it out of the SparkFun Battery Shield, which is a really awesome breakout board that allows you to plug in a lithium-ion battery with a JST connector right here. And then it has a spot on the bottom where you can hook up a barrel jack. And so the barrel jack is for the solar panel. So the solar panel plugs in here, and then uh, the lithium-ion battery is charged with the solar panel. As long as your solar panel has a higher voltage output than your battery, then it'll charge the batteries. All right, so that's uh, the photon microcontroller and the power. And then I can pull out my breadboard and show you the temperature sensor. So this is the temperature sensor. It's a TMP-102 made by SparkFun, or the break breakout board is made by SparkFun. And there are six pins, but only four of them are used for this project. Feel free to keep it on this breadboard. This breadboard actually came with the Photon kit, so that's super handy. But if you want to make it a little bit more robust, a little bit more traditional way to go is to use a PCB board. I'm going to go with a smaller breadboard to make it a little bit more compact. And also, this will allow me to change things, to add things, to modify the project, or to totally just repurpose the temperature sensor or the microcontroller if I want to. All right, so that means that I'm going to take out this temperature sensor and connect it to this breadboard. All right, I think that's it. So I've connected the VN and the ground, as well as the SDA and the SCL pins to the Photon. And unless you have other sensors, that's pretty much it. So now I can just check to make sure that it comes on by, well, first I'm gonna plug in the solar panel. Cool. So right now I haven't set this up for the Wi-Fi at this location. Uh, I've been programming it at home, so it's all configured for my home Wi-Fi. But the Photon microcontroller can hold up to five different Wi-Fi router names and passwords. So if you want to move it around, you can. And it'll still upload data. Well, as long as you're within the Wi-Fi network. So that might be particularly useful for schools if you have different routers. Um, so if this is connected to the internet, instead of flashing green, it'll breathe or pulse slowly light blue. The flashing green means it's looking for Wi-Fi. It's like, all ready to go. It's just like, hey, I can't connect to the Wi-Fi. Cool, so now that I've tested it and made sure that it works, let's go ahead and put it in the case. Oh wait, no. First, I wanna make sure that everything stays fairly rigid, so I'm gonna cover things by things, I mean the electrical connections, so the uh, most common points of failure and some hot glue. So while I'm letting this dry, I'll talk about installing the solar panel. So, <laughs> like I mentioned before, I'm a big fan of going to a thrift store and kind of seeing what you can find to build your projects with, and I found this I think it's a towel rack, I'm not totally sure. But what I really liked about this was that these are adjustable. To attach this to the towel holder, <laughs> um, I'm just gonna use some Velcro strips. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so a better way to do this if you're actually going to put it outside would be to use epoxy um, or duct tape. Duct tape fixes everything, right? <laughs> 
Um, hot glue will work for a little while. It'll probably fall apart in like a week. Um, but I just want to test this and make sure that everything works and that it's functional and that I can track the sun before I make it all permanent and just like can't adjust anything. So that's a good rule of thumb, uh, especially because when you start designing and building things, the first iteration is never going to be exactly what you want. I shouldn't say never, but for the most part, it's really hard to get exactly what you want the first time around. All right, so I think everything's all dry now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the case. Once you've got everything glued and put in the case, then you wanna figure out how you are going to allow the solar panel cord into the case. So I would recommend drilling a hole in the side. Um, so put the components in, kind of make sure that all the wires are comfortable and then kind of mark where the cord would go so if in this example I would probably drill a hole like right here um, I kind of like this case though and I don't really want to drill a hole in it um, so I'm going to use some of this moisture sealing electrical tape or waterproofing electrical tape so I'm going to put a piece underneath the cord to kind of uh, protect it from the sharp edges of the case and then put the case on and then cover it with another piece of tape and make sure so if it rains you want the water to flow off and make sure that none of it will get up inside the tape and into your box even if you've coated everything with epoxy and all of that good stuff there's no exposed electrical connections you always just want to err on the side of caution, especially when it comes to water and electronics. They usually don't mix too well. So that's pretty much it. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions about this project. Check out the tutorial in the video description below, which gives you a thorough overview on where to get all these components, a background on the I2C communication protocol that the temperature sensor uses, as well as a quick overview on how to actually upload data to the data.sparkfun uh, web server. All right, I'll leave you with a question, and that question is, why does the solar panel voltage, the output voltage, need to be greater than the battery voltage? Happy building, and thank you for watching.